Hi, my name is Jason Winterholt, the Regional Sales Manager for Bayer Crop Science for Northern Saskatchewan. Today we're out at the Iraq Ultimate Yield Canola Trial, where we're out testing the genetics of all the top canola varieties in the market today. We have a high fertilizer package. All these varieties have been sprayed with a fungicide. Uh, all the varieties have been swathed at the appropriate swath timing for each individual variety. So we're kind of excited to get into these 10 varieties, uh, weigh them out and see, uh, see who the big winner is. My name is Nathan Natrick with Bayer Crop Science. I'm the territory sales manager for this area. This area in particular, we had good amounts of moisture and uh, definitely was a season that set up that was conducive to disease development. So there was a, a pretty good fertility package put on this uh, particular piece of land. So we knew that the disease levels were gonna be potentially a bit uh, higher. So there was also ProLine applied across the board on, on the trial. Uh, all in all, the Invigor genetics have stood up very well and uh, very happy with the, uh, with the results so far. This plot was seeded on the 29th of May, which is kind of late. It was uh, also the agronomy applied to this plot was ultimate yield management. There are six factors that are rated that we try to score as high as possible on. And uh, you can go to uh, the rackonline.com and look up UIMI or UIMI.ca to, to see more details about our, our program that we're excited about. We are targeting 70 bushels on these plots and we're going to see how they do. As you can see from the stubble, the pest control, uh, including weed control, uh, disease control, was uh, quite good. Uh, this uh, plot received an application of proline fungicide. It also received a rival pre-emergent uh, trifurilin. Uh, it was surface applied to help control surface weeds with a different spectrum. It was sprayed once with Liberty and once with Centurion. The field was also fungicide sprayed with uh, proline and a liquid application of boron. So we're gonna get in there and see what the way wagon tells us about all these varieties and we're kind of excited to be here today to, to uh, capture the fruits of all our labors for 2014. And there's also L140P which is a pod shatter resistant variety that is still standing and will be getting cut down later this afternoon. And we'll do a comparison on how that yields in relation to uh, swath varieties. Well, here we are taking a look at the final results. Uh, quite a range. Uh, looks like the, the range was anywhere from 53.7 bushels all the way up to 70.4. So it looks like we got one of those varieties to give us a 70.4 target yield. Uh, that variety was the L130. So uh, kudos to the L130, uh, it uh, was swathed the earliest uh, and uh, of all the varieties and uh, uh, quite an impressive uh, performance for the L130. In terms of the Roundup Readies, looks like the H31 was the high yielder, but uh, one interesting point is that uh, there's 11.5% premium paid for Nexera oil and so the next era 10 12 effective yield is 65.6 uh, bushels an acre when you consider that there's a dollar 15 a bushel premium for that quality oil uh, end of the day if i was going to grow a liberty link canola in this area of the world uh, seated late i'd take a look at the l130 for sure and uh, if i was going to grow a roundup ready variety i think i'd be looking at growing next era 10 12 uh, premium plus a real good performer so what have we learned about all this? Well, interestingly enough, uh, this is a late seeded plot. The earlier maturing varieties appear to have done better. Uh, having harvested all the different varieties, it was apparent to me that, that the sclerotinia was, the cross sclerotinia, sclerotinia crossing over from plant to plant, was worse in the branchier varieties. And had we uh, maybe seeded a little bit earlier this plot, I think the results may have showed that the, the big dogs like the 252 and the 261 may have performed better. We did note that on another field on this farm, the 252 was yielding in the mid 70s and it had been seeded on the 18th of May. So uh, it would have been nice to see what an earlier seeding plot would have given us results on. However, uh, this is the conclusion of these ones. And uh, interestingly enough, uh, there's there's uh, a lot of different varieties, actually very close, all in the low 60s. Uh, basically, if you can fertilize for 60 to 70, you can grow it with any variety. And that's, I think, something to take home from this.